Hello, this is another one of my uh, videos on uh, my old essay, Sociological Theories Regarding the Emergence and Development of New Religious Movements. This one quite short, dealing with societal contexts. I've already discussed various psychological theories, in particular deprivation theories of the emergence of uh, religious movements. I then moved on to uh, what I've termed crisis theories for the movement's emergence, including a typology of crisis, crises of survival, social potency, meaning and psychic fulfillment, the ideological contexts, which we've just discussed, and now today societal contexts. To recap what I said in the last two videos, crises of meaning do not occur in a symbolic vacuum. Systems of religious belief and practice which embody symbolic meanings have a traditional reality which pre-exists the individual human subject who encounters them. Such traditional reality imposes its own constraint. Even the religiously creative individual innovates strictly within a given framework. We now move on to societal contexts. As employed here, the term crisis is essentially a social psychological rather than social structural variable. As such, the typology of crises, which has been identified, is analytically distinct from any putative societal crises, which have been identified on the basis of underlying transformations of socioeconomic relationships and formations. General social factor crises, whether within or between particular modes of production, are highly relevant to the generation of psychological crises, but they're not, in my view, ultimately determinative of them. Crises of survival, of social potency and of meaning occur in different societal contexts and are not reductible to those contexts, however much they may be distinguished by them. There are a number of ways in which societies may be differentiated uh, from each other. Of particular heuristic value here is the distinction between traditional and modern societies, made not in terms of the static possession of particular attributes, but in relationship to the world historical process of modernization, described as the institutional concomitants of technologically induced economic growth, together with the attendant dimension of consciousness. On this basis, traditional societies uh, were those which existed prior to the emergence of the modern world, whilst modern societies were all those societies which had been and are being transformed by the processes of modernization, most rooted in the development of industrial capitalism and social bureaucratization. In terms of crisis and the emergence of new religions, further distinctions may be made. Thus, traditional societies may be divided into the relatively undifferentiated, simple, small-scale kinship societies in which religion tended to be all-pervasive and normally gave little leverage for social change, and the more complex and differentiated societies characterised by the emergence of the often rival institutions of church and state and by patterned relationships of political, military and economic inequalities and exploitation. Similarly, modern societies may be divided into those culturally diffracted societies in which there's a high level of structural differentiation, specialization and autonomy, that is the advanced industrial countries, and those so-called prismatic societies in which the process of differentiation attendant upon modernity has begun but is incomplete. Of these four subtypes, the relatively cohesive simple societies were liable to be unproductive of new religious movements unless faced with some extraordinary event when innovative charismatic leaders were liable to emerge, as for example in the frequent millenarian or acculturative response, responses to the externally induced crisis of colonialism. Complex traditional societies, on the other hand, were liable to be highly productive of new religious movements, religious and political interests and antagonisms frequently intermeshing, and both internally and externally induced crises leading to the emergence of such movements.
modern prismatic societies were and are likely to be similarly productive. Diffractive societies, that is, uh, the industrial societies, by contrast with their high level of structural differentiation, have tended towards a marked division between religious and political interests, legal secularization, and the emergence of religious movements, which were and are mostly concerned with subjective religious experience and communalism. So that's the conclusion of this section. Uh, many thanks to you for listening, and particular thanks to my patrons for their kind support and encouragement, without which I wouldn't be able to make these uh, videos. If you want to support my channel, you're very welcome to do so. It really does help. Like, comment, and share on the videos. Subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. Ring the bell button. Patreon and PayPal links below if you want to provide practical support. Next week, uh, we'll move on to social location and mobilization. Again, from this essay, but a new section. Uh, have a good day.